Kimichi, and this is my husband, Sean. And for the last year, we've been traveling the world. We've visited 16 countries and 30 cities. This is the story of how we decided to put every single thing that we owned in storage, leave California where we were living, and travel the world. <laughs> Hello beautiful people, welcome to my channel. I am Kimichi. I'm Sean. That's my husband. In today's video, we're gonna be telling you why we packed everything up in storage, left San Francisco, and decided to travel the world. So, going back to March 2020, mm -hmm. we had just came back from an awesome vacation in Trinidad. Yes, my home country of Trinidad. We went for carnival, and if you know anything about carnival, it's Parte. So it's a lot of whining, grinding, okay? And we had not heard anything about C19. You guys know what we're talking about. So when we touched down in the US, we finally heard about the virus and all that was going on and I started to have some very strange symptoms, okay? Um, let's just say I had all the symptoms of the virus and they had said, you know, if you had been in close proximity to anyone from these countries, then you could possibly have the virus. So anyway, I ended up going to the hospital. He wasn't allowed to go with me, which was scary. He comes to me comes with me to all my appointments. And this was the time before they even knew what the virus was, how contagious it was. The hospitals, sorry, there's a bug flying around. <laughs> um, the hospitals didn't have the proper PPE gear. So the doctor was like scared to touch me. The nurse was like trying to keep her distance. And I realized like, if I do have this virus and I die here, I'm gonna die alone and it was the scariest thing ever they just came in and they swabbed me for the corona and the flu so the results should come back in an hour i thought they did it before but it was just blood um it's very very lonely again i don't know i just talked to sean and guys i can't imagine like being quarantined in a hospital you got no tv no nothing just by yourself and then you die you know i uh, just i'm just thinking about it i just want my chest my chest pain is intense um i just want that to go away <coughs> i don't know um sean couldn't come with me because you know they're not taking extra people i don't like hospitals to begin with so having to stay here by myself is a scary thought and and knowing that he couldn't even come even if he wanted he's such a sweetheart that he's waiting in the parking lot for me so guys the nurse just gave me some tylenol for my chest pain <clears throat> She said my results for the flu came back and the flu was negative. And I am f***ing shook. Because I was hoping it was the flu. I don't want to cry, but it just sucks just being alone in this depressing ass f***ing hospital room. <sighs> Most likely I'll be on quarantine. I already knew I'd be on quarantine because um, it takes a few days for the COVID-19 test results to come back. But um, I'm shook, I ain't gonna lie, I'm shook. I can't even sleep because I'm so scared. And once I came out of that hospital, I realized like what was important and that was family. So our lease at our apartment at that time was about to end. And I remember saying like, you know, maybe we should consider moving back to Iowa where my husband is from for a little bit of time. But his job hadn't decided to go full remote yet. Everything wasn't shut down. So we ended up renting, getting a short-term rental. And how that happened, everybody from California was escaping, okay? It was a mass <laughs> exodus from California. The rent is so high there. You know, to give you an example, you can rent a couch in someone's house for like $2,000 a month. It was 
insane, okay? It's getting pretty bad. Yeah, so we were like, why are we paying over 3K for an apartment when we, we aren't even leaving the house? Like, this is ridiculous. But due to the pandemic, they had sales on apartments, so we were able to get a short-term rental of seven months with one month free. Um, and that gave us enough time to decide what we really wanted to do, if your job was going to, like start having you guys back in office or whatever it was. This was a January 2nd. Mm -hmm. so that was how long we had it until. Yeah. So around September, I think it was, we, we decided to, like, what are, what are we going to do with our lives? What are the options here? So we put our options in a hat and you can tell them the options. Yeah. So one was to try to move to Iowa, buy a house and actually like have property to our name. We've always had like, the American dream. Like, oh, we own a house. Like, yeah, great. but it, to be clear, it was going to be an investment property. Yes. We would only live there for a year we during the pandemic. Quite yeah. sold on Iowa as a forever home, if we're being honest. <laughs> so, we're not sold. Yeah. But <laughs> so the other option was to not do much of anything else, just stay in California, wait it out, and just like, oh, it's actually not bad. I mean, it's it's beautiful. It's beautiful, but we're spending a lot of money to stay yes. inside. Mm -hmm. Yes. And our last option was to try to put ourselves in storage and go travel for two to three months. Yeah. And it turns out that we pulled, I believe we pulled out of the hat that we should buy a house. So in October, we headed to Sean's hometown of Ames, Iowa. Oh, and that's where Iowa State is. That's where you were. That's not my hometown. Oh, I said that in the other video too. You did. <laughs> Um, okay, so <laughs> we headed to Pella, Iowa, Sean's hometown, and we were looking for houses either in Pella, Iowa, or Des Moines, uh, Iowa, the capital. And we decided to focus on Des Moines because there was more rentability there and it was yes. closer to every everything, basically. So I personally saw about close to 30 houses. I would say you 20 or so, maybe. That much? Probably not, but at least 10. Okay, but I saw a lot. Okay, I went around with my realtor, maybe not 30, but I would say close to 30. A yeah. good bit. Yeah, I, I was. I think between all of the stuff that we saw and that yeah, you go around like, and all. Yeah, a lot. But anyway, and it was very stressful because, yes, it was going to be an investment property, but we also had to envision ourselves living there for a year and i'm very picky okay so a lot of the new build houses were small on small lots and the neighbors were very close to you i did not like that at all yeah like four feet probably less so if you're talking they can hear you kind of like where we are now but <laughs> this property is very beautiful but you know you can hear the neighbors and stuff you guys probably hear them anyway <laughs> Anyway, so that was not really an option for us. Then there were, I would say, three other houses. There was one that was kind of like in the boondocks. It was like way out. And I really, really loved the property. But our realtor, who was also an investor, said like, listen, this is not going to give you a good return on your investment because it's been on the market a long time. And that means it's a hard sell and people probably wouldn't want to rent it and stuff like that. The second home that we thought of, your dad actually came, looked at it, and was like, nope, <laughs> it needs a lot of work. So that was out of the question. And the last house, everybody kind of agreed with it. I loved it. I started seeing, you know, our family there over the years and, and all of that. However, someone had already placed an offer and it was a contingency sale. So a contingency sale means that the buyer has to sell their house first before they can buy that house. So the other it, house the buyer, the seller wants to go buy. Yeah. So if we place an offer in that house, the seller has to give that buyer 24 hours to come up with the money. So this, we found this out, I think on a Friday. And instead of putting in the offer on the Friday, we decided let's wait till Monday so they could have exactly 24 hours because who's going to be able to come up with money in 24 hours, right? If we did it the Friday, they would have the entire weekend to find the funds. So we thought we were being strategic, but honey, somebody else got the house <laughs> and our offer was denied. So I was really, really bummed because I liked that house. My dad was going to come help us build it. And I just 
that's why they say don't see yourself on something until you already have it like i was seeing us you know in that year there <laughs> but anyway sometimes a no is god's yes to something greater for you so we weren't that bummed for too long we were kind of sad that you know we weren't gonna be in iowa um next to our family but we realized shortly that it was a good thing because it was also election time and in iowa people are not shy about posting posters in their yard advertising who they're voting for and i'm a black woman and um you know in the trump era it's hard to say if someone is just republican and loyal to the republican party or if they believe in some of the racist rhetoric that was going around so looking for a house i had to think about all of that and it was just it's too much it was too uh, the country was too what's the word i'm looking for divided the, is a yeah word. yeah divided at the time so it worked out better for us and we decided that we were going to travel the world yes so once we decided we're, that we were going to travel the world we had to do two things we had to pick the first country that we we're going to go to and we had to figure out what to do with all our stuff yeah so we went to medellin colombia first let's talk about why medellin of all places so basically uh, when you look to live somewhere else that's not in the u.s but still have a u.s job one of the things that comes up is time zones and we didn't want to have a crazy time zone right, right away and so that means you have to go basically south to south america to see which was only about six hours difference or something like no, that it was like east coast time eastern oh, okay yeah so it's actually pretty pretty reasonable um all things considered there and also at the time a lot of countries were just still closed, frankly. Peru was closed. Argentina was closed. I believe Ecuador was yeah. al also closed. So Almost everything was closed. Yeah. So Colombia is one of the only countries that we could get into. Yes. And um, as we got there, basically it was still kind of closed, but at least open it up for us to go enjoy it. Exactly. We also want to learn to speak Spanish fluently. Mm -hmm. so that has been a goal of ours. A fun fact is we actually met studying abroad in Spain in 2010. And so travel and Spanish and all these things kind of are just part of us. Yeah, I could give them a rundown, like how travel is just part of our relationship. So we, yes, we met in Spain, we remained friends. Then he visited New York from Iowa as friends. He stayed with my family and I. My mom invited him to Trinidad the next year. He came to Trinidad with us. That's where we fell in love. And then we were long distance, him in Iowa, me in New York. And every month we would go to different states to meet each other. Um, for my graduation, you surprised me with a trip to Colombia, and that's where we got introduced to Bogota and Medellin and how we learned of Colombia. And um, then we got engaged in Thailand, and that's where we are now again. So everything is like full circle, but travel has always been a big part of our relationship. When we settled down in California, it slowed down because, you know, I'm chronically ill. He has a full-time job, and it just became harder to to do it, I would say, or to prioritize traveling. Yes, also just work. So. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, that, 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 yeah you, you had to go in the office and yes. he's a people person and couldn't really envision himself not being in the office as well, you know? But with the pandemic, we learned that yes. you could work anywhere. Yeah. Indeed. That's a good learning, huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the next step was finding a place to put our stuff in storage, which was hard at first because like I told you guys, everybody was leaving California. So all the storage units were sold out basically. But you found pods. I did, and it worked out well. So pods, basically you put your stuff, they will ship you a, basically a shipping container for you to go put all of your stuff in. So they will drop it off in front of your door. You put all your stuff in it, they pick it up and they go put it in one of the warehouses. Now, the cool part is they will also ship it to you anywhere else in the nation. And so given that we have no idea where we actually want to be in the U.S., yeah. um, we thought it would be wise to pack all of our stuff in a moving, a, mov a movable shipping container, basically. Mm -hmm. um, there. And it's very affordable. It's only $250 a month. And yes. I think that's cheaper than some of the stationary storage units that they had there. So it worked out. Almost how much it was to park a car. 
yourself. We have all, you can park sure. a car for a month, or you can put all of your entire life into a. That's second. also something we did. We parked our two cars in an airport parking lot long term. Um, yes. <laughs> so anyway, it has been almost a year so far that we have been traveling. It was never supposed to be this long. It was only supposed to be like for a few months initially. Uh, initially but we have not looked back because we realized that this last year has been the best thing yes. to have ever happened to us you know in the pandemic a lot of people are stuck together and it's not working out for them but we realized we could tolerate each other more than tolerate each other we could thrive being together 24 7. it has brought us closer it's made me fall more in love with you learn a lot about you and i feel like we are a unit you know it's not all peaches and cream let's be real but yes. it's good for the most part you know yeah, it has been yes <laughs> so we've now seen 16 countries this year 30 cities a lot of cities yeah but it has been fun i, I think basically once you got started like, do you need to go back yet no uh, and it, we, there's not a lot of stuff like tying this down or a good motivation. No, we don't have any kids. We don't have any pets, you know. And and we're still at a point where we have no idea where we want to be in the next month even. like. So that brings me to in the last year, what are five th your top five things, like experiences or things you've learned? like? Yes. Well, I think when people ask, like, what country would you recommend? I think Peru is really, really nice. Uh, basically, there's a ton of adventures to do. I wouldn't say we're the most adventurous, like hiking and that kind of couple ever. We are adventurous. I said hiking and that kind okay. of Okay, we're it's not terrifying. like hard core trekkers and stuff. Yes. Yes, but Peru has a lot of outdoor adventures that are accessible um, and very, very fun to do. Yes. And there's just a wide variety. It's kind of California. We have it cold and hot and desert and mountain and ocean all mm. in like. A country. Yes. So how uh, Peru came about, I volunteered in Peru a few years ago and I loved it. I went to Arequipa, Peru and I saw like this, I did go to Huacachino where they had the sandboarding and stuff and I always wanted him to experience it. So that's why it was on our list and I'm so happy that you loved it as much as I love it. So now it's like both of our favorite countries. Yes. Mm -hmm. Also love Peruvian food. So. So that's uh, two things, uh-huh. Well, I'll, I'll add on to my second. That's a pretty weak second thing. So <laughs> okay. I, I will explain it. I said I love to eat and I love to try new food. And so being everywhere over here has been awesome to try all kinds of food truly around the world. Um, I'm a big fan of that. So crepes in Paris mm -hmm. and the Pad Thai, of course, here. Plus other Pad Thai. Other Thai things are not just Pad Thai. But, yeah, yes, uh, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes. Okay, so. so that's two, three. Yeah. Um, working hasn't been as bad as I thought it would be. It is. I can do it. And I don't mind it, actually. So working remotely. remotely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and how are you feeling not being around people in the office as much? I still get most of it, I think, through calls. And Zoom? Things. Yes. Um, <laughs> a lot of Zoom calls. There's probably like four or five hours of meetings a day I'm in usually for work. So it's not like I'm just alone uh, to my own thoughts. There's a lot of interaction. Things, um, there. Um, the time zones have been not too bad actually. So how the time zones basically work is, well, so when it was Eastern time, we had a little bit of time in the morning, but it's almost like the California kind of day. We did do some things early in the morning, mm -hmm. um, well in South America there, but oh, it's just like live for the weekends. Our travel day was usually Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, and then in Europe, basically I start working at like 6 p.m. until like 3 a.m. And that wasn't too bad because basically you have your entire day yeah. um, to go do touristy things. And you just wake up at like noon, which isn't terrible. Thailand is interesting. I'm now like fully nocturnal. Yeah, uh, we're it's a 15 hour difference between here and California. Yes. So 9 a.m. California is midnight here like the next day. So basically Monday 9 a.m. is like Monday at midnight here. So um, your weekends are, our weekends are basically shifted now. Because we have all of Friday to like work like Thursday basically. Um, so Friday night is just Friday. And then uh, we have Monday and Sunday basically. Mm -hmm. Number four. That was number four, wasn't it? Number five. Yeah. Oh, sorry, guys. Um, yeah, but we have run a lot closer together. And I do enjoy seeing the world with you. 
You saved the best for last. <laughs> um, my top five would be, in no particular order, would be the food. Unfortunately for me, I my diet is restricted, so I can't have gluten. I can't have certain meats. It's just no. <sighs> it's been hard, okay? It's been hard, but I still like trying all the various dishes to say that I've done it. And usually I like some and some not so much, but I like the experience of traveling, um, of trying it, sorry. Number two would be the fact that I've evolved as a person and my, I've seen multiple ways that one can live a life, multiple cultures. And I understand that the way that we do it in the U.S. or in Trinidad, for example, is not the only way to live life. You know, um, a lot of times we go through life thinking the way we do things is the right way. But there are multiple ways to the same end goal. And I like that it has broadened my horizons. I think each country has like a special thing that we probably really like about that. Country yeah, that's different yeah, from other yeah. So number three would be that I have gotten so much more adventurous. Like I always like trying things, but I had some severe fears, okay? Like I was scared of drowning and I was scared of driving and crashing. And I've swam in caves. <laughs> snorkeled in the ocean I have uh, jumped into the deep end of a pool <laughs> multiple times hey, exactly. yeah yes. no it that was a big thing yes. like before I would be scared to put my toe in like I would not go near water at all yes. um you know I rode a scooter motorbike motorbike scooter. Not, 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 not the well, the scooter can be kind of lame. It's like, True. oh, it's an electric scooter. True. A okay, motorbike. a motorbike. I rode a motorbike. Put your wind visor down so your eyelashes don't blow off. <laughs> All right. All right. The ATVs in the mountains. I don't even like those swervy roads, but I did it. I freaking did it. And each country, each experience, I surprise myself and I'm so proud of myself for trying stuff because I think like, for example, some of the past trips we've been on, I've been a party pooper. I'd stay on the boat and let him do the experience. Like when we were last in Thailand, for example. Yeah, like my engagement was... I took on a boat trip. Bad idea. Bad idea. A boat trip and we had to go through this cave with the water that was like waist length and I freaked out thinking yeah. that they were trying to kill me. Okay, but I was trying to propose to her, not kill her. Yeah, he was actually trying to propose to me. It's so sweet. Like that would be most people's dream engagement, right? And I was just like, ah. but anyway. So what number was that? Okay, so four. I like that we are closer to being fluent in Spanish. It's very important to me that we learn to speak at least one other language fluently in our lifetime. I would say we're very close to it in Spanish, and I love that. I feel like you could think differently in another language and see the world. I don't know. The world is different in a different language. It if also that makes opens sense. up the world. Because as we travel, it has been extremely helpful, even with our knowledge of Spanish today. Yeah. Without that, some yeah. moments would have been tougher. Mm -hmm. And five, <laughs> I love that we don't know which countries we want to live in. I think that says a lot. It means that we're adaptable and we embrace cultures we embrace people and languages and i think if it was like oh my gosh like we belong in the u.s we know we want i don't think it would have been such a fabulous experience i don't know i don't know what how to explain what i'm trying to say but i think it's a great thing that we don't know where in the world we want to live because it means that we love multiple places also we just can't decide a lot of things like we don't know where we're going to be staying in the next two days so yeah. So there's that part. But 
I like how you put it. How you put it sounds exactly <laughs> like that. So. Yes, babe. But think about it. If we went to these countries and we hated them, we would be able to say like, yes, for sure, the U.S. is where we want to be. Yes. But we can't say that. That is true. So it says a lot. But anyway, to wrap this video up, I want to say if you're thinking about traveling, you ab absolutely should do it. In order to have a nomadic life, people usually think that you need to be rich. I don't think that you need to be rich. You can definitely do it on a budget. There's a lot of people that backpack. For example, in Bangkok, you can get a hostel, a bed for like 10 US dollars a night, probably cheaper, really. You can get a whole apartment for $23 a night. You know, it is very doable. It just depends on the kind of lifestyle that you want to live. For us, we usually do medium to sometimes more luxurious places, but that's because we have everything in storage. So what we would have spent- We don't have a lease. Yeah. That's the key. We, we don't have a lease. That's what I'm, or a mortgage, you know? So what we would have spent in rent or on a mortgage is what we're spending to live this this lifestyle, basically. Yes. Um, I think I'll make another video of all like the tactical tips and suggestions on how to actually do this. And that brings me to we have decided it's finally time to bring you guys on our journey, our awkward adventures. So every single Thursday, I'm going to be uploading a new video because it's going to be awkward travel Thursdays because, you know, we're a little bit awkward or whatever, documenting our entire journey starting from Medellin, Colombia. So you're going to get to see us packing our pod and flying to Colombia and all of that good stuff because I think some of the gems that we have is going to be so helpful to the people that want to live this lifestyle and it even maybe you don't even know that you want to do it yet but seeing us do it might influence you to want to see the world so if you don't have a passport that's the first thing you need to do get your passport okay yes. um, and secondly save 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 if if you're not financially free you can save and you can make it happen whatever your situation is it is possible. You just have to be strategic about the way in which you go about it. Any last words? I'm looking forward to more videos and sharing our adventure. Yeah. So if you guys made it this far, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a like, subscribe to the channel. And until next time, make sure you stay safe. Please stay safe in these times. You know, take care of your mental health and all of that good stuff. And I will see you in the next video. See ya. Bye.